Hello dear students, in this lesson we will take a look at the trigonometric functions. We also call them angle functions. To understand this topic, you definitely have to watch the videos about the unit circle. With the unit circle, we showed how to define sine and cosine on the unit circle for any angle. And we need this exact unit circle to represent the trigonometric functions. The trigonometric functions include the sine function, the cosine function and the tangent function. These are called elementary trigonometric functions, because there are others, including the reciprocal functions of these three. We will now take a look at the sine function and clarify what that means. A reminder, what is a function? We know linear and quadratic functions already. Where we got to know something like f of x equals 2 times x. Or g of x equals x squared, etc. So here we had a function which we named f or g. Then we defined an x here, which is a variable for which a value is used. And then here is the calculation of this function. And afterwards, the y value comes out here. And from this we got a point with x and y coordinates, which we could then enter in the coordinate system. So we have an association between an x value and a y value. Each x value is assigned a y value. And this assignment is a function. And for the sine function we don't have f of x, but we have sine of x. And with this sine of x our sine value comes out. And the x is our angle. So now we can write. Sine of 0 degrees, think of the unit circle, is 0. Or sine of 90 degrees, think again of the unit circle, has a height of 1. Each degree is assigned a sine value. And this results in value pairs, or x and y coordinates, which we can then enter in a coordinate system. And of course not only for sine, but also for cosine and for tangent. Let's take a closer look at the sine function. And here is a hint, we always use angles as values for x. So please remember this fact. I will show you what I mean with the unit circle. In the unit circle we have the x-axis and the y-axis. And now we assign to an angle a value that we can read off the circle. We assign the sine value, that is, the height. Our cosine value down here, which is the value at the x-axis, we ignore in this case. That means, we start at 0 degrees and have a height at 0 degrees, that is a sine value of 0. And if we go, for example, to 60 degrees, we have sine of 60 degrees equals 0 0.866, so here on the y-axis we see this value. And so we can enter these angles with the corresponding sine values in another, second coordinate system. Therefore here is our unit circle, where we have our sine values for y. And here on the circle we have the angles from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. And here is our second coordinate system whose x-axis is our angle. Here we have 0 degrees. Here 90 degrees, here 180 degrees, here 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. So you can imagine that we cut this circle and then rolled it out here. And please pay attention. This x is the number of degrees, which is our angle value. Whereas the x on the unit circle is the cosine value, which we will look at later. So do not confuse these two. 
Next we want to get the appropriate height, that is the sine value, for each individual angle. Every angle gets assigned a height, which is its sine value. And if we do that for every single angle, it looks like this. The angle value increases and the sine values increase from 0 to 1. And then at 90 degrees we reach a value of 1. Here at 0 degrees we have the sine value 0. And now at 90 degrees, at this point, we have the sine value 1. And 1 is the maximum value that sine can take. For the second quadrant of our unit circle we know. The sine value will decrease again and then move towards 0. And it will be 0 at 180 degrees. Let the animation continue. And you see, the value decreases, here it's 0 0.809. It decreases until it finally reaches 180 degrees where the height is 0 and the sine value is 0. And over here, 180 degrees has a height of 0, or equivalently, the sine value is 0. And for this part, we can already recognize how the values change. Now let's look at the third and fourth quadrants. Here you see, the values become negative, because we are below 0. And if we go to 270 degrees, then we have a sine value of minus 1. Let's look at our second coordinate system. Here at 270 degrees we have our value with minus 1. And now we go to 360 degrees and the minus 1 will increase until it reaches 0. And that's exactly the graph of our sine function from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, where we can read off the corresponding sine value for each angle. By the way, this graph is also called a sine wave. We no longer need to use the unit circle to find the sine values. Because we can get the sine values right here by reading the graph. So if someone asks us for sine of 90 degrees, and we have the graph in front of us, then we look at 90 degrees, look up here and see, the sine value is 1. Sine of 180 degrees is the sine value at the location at this height. Let's look to the left. That's 0. At sine of 270 degrees we look down. The sine value at 270 degrees is minus 1. And at 360 degrees we have the sine value 0. You now know how the unit circle is related to this graph of the sine function. By the way, instead of showing the sine value here with this line, We can also display this sine value directly on the y-axis, so we can also read the changing sine values here. At this point we can present an example that also explains the shape of this graph. Because it's not, like our circle, so perfectly round. Instead it's swinging. So let's imagine we are here at the center of our coordinate system and have a ball that we throw up. To make our example physically correct, we say that the ball is attached to a spring, which pulls it back when it's at the top. We ignore gravitational force. On the x-axis we use time instead of the angles, for example in milliseconds. The ball will reach a certain height and then come back by the force of the spring. And that could look something like this. Here it is very fast, then it slows down, and at the top it stays at 1. So it has reached 100% of its throwing height, so to speak. And then it returns again. And it gets faster and faster the closer it gets to 0. 
so, in the beginning it is very fast. Then slows down. Then has a speed of zero at 90 degrees. And then its height decreases, until finally it's zero and we catch the ball again. Next we see another example with a pendulum. This example will show you why the sine graph swings like this. The graph of the sine function tells us how much the sine value, the height, will increase from one angle to another angle. Because if we go halfway from 90 degrees, to 45 degrees, that does not mean that we went halfway up. As we see, the two heights differ. As an example we go from 0 degrees to 20 degrees. Sine of 0 degrees equals 0 and sine of 20 degrees equals 0 0.342. So we can see this is 34.2% and we know. If here is 100% of the way up, we have covered 34.2% of the way. From 0 degrees to 20 degrees, 34% of the way. Now let's look at how it is from 70 degrees to 90 degrees. The sine of 70 degrees equals 0 0.940. At 70 degrees we have covered 94% of the distance. Now we go from here 20 degrees more and we come to 90 degrees, which is 100%. We have traveled from 94% to 100%, which is 6% of the distance. Here we calculated plus 20 degrees and had 34%. And here we go plus 20 degrees and only covered a height of 6%. We go from 0 degrees to 20 degrees, reach 34% of the distance, that is a sine value of 0 0.342. And then we also go up from 70 degrees also plus 20 degrees up to 90 degrees and go 94% to 100%. Or 6% of the height, and this exact behavior describes this function graph, this oscillation. If we run from 0 degrees to 20 degrees, we can read the sine value here, 0.342. And if we are here at 70 degrees now, this graph is not as steep as here below. It doesn't go so steeply upwards, but it smooths out until it's flat at 90 degrees and no longer goes up. And then further on it goes down again. And here our increase in sign value is very small, at just 0.06. By the way, we are creating this piece of the graph by simply mirroring that part over here. So this part is mirrored on the right, and you have the same slope, only going downwards. 180 degrees to 270 degrees can also be generated from the first piece of the graph using a reflection. And we can also get 270 degrees to 360 degrees with a reflection from the first graph. So we have a similar slope in each quadrant. Of course this has to do with the fact that we generate the sign with similar triangles in each of the four quadrants, as we have already learned. Please note that if you see this oscillation, the x-axis represents our circle with the respective degrees. And our function graph of the sine function corresponds to the sine values for the respective angle. And most importantly, the increase in height from one degree to another is different. As we have seen, if we go from 0 degrees to 20 degrees to the right, we have a much higher increase in the sine value than when we go from 70 degrees plus 20 degrees to the right. And then we had the example with the ball. Where we imagine a ball being thrown up here. It flies up. Its speed decreases. It reaches a maximum height. And then falls to the ground again. 
Next, consider the cosine function, and how we can generate a function graph for it. <laughs>